I'm going to show you how to find the zeros of quadratics with one of the methods called factoring. Just want to remind you, right, the whole goal is to find the zeros or the roots or the solutions, basically the x-intercepts of a quadratic. We want to find out where does it cross the x-axis. So the whole idea is to set your f of x equal to zero. That's the key here. By the way, I like this one right here. <laughs> find the zeros of this quadratic. <laughs> the student's like, it's right there. <laughs> That's clever. So let's, let's see why it is that factoring is a good one. I always try to factor it first. This is in my order of, you know, what I try to do. I look at this quadratic, whatever the numbers A, B, and C are, and I try to see, can I factorize it? If so, I do that because it's quickest and it's easiest. So factored form could be something like, um, like this, like X minus P, X minus Q. Let's just sort of make it generic here. A could be anything, P is something, Q is, it doesn't really matter. Basically get it in terms of something times something times something. Anything like this. This is the, at least the IB's official sort of factorized form. Now you don't get this on your formula book, you don't really need to know it exactly in this form. I don't think that's so important. What's more important I think is knowing we're going to use what's called the zero factor theorem. That I think is the key. What I mean by that is if we're finding the zeros, remember, to find the zeros mean we're trying to find that equal to zero, right? That's what the zeros are. The zeros are where f of x equals zero. So we're trying to make this equal zero. We've got this times this mess. Basically, let's just look at it like this. We've got this mess times this mess times this mess. In fact, very often, this is just going to be a number. Mm, so we're actually going to ignore it. This number can't be, uh, say, well, this will just be a. So we're going to have this mess right here. So this might be like two. Fine. 2 times x minus p times x minus q, whatever those numbers are. The key is this. If I make any of them 0, so if I make this one 0, the whole thing works because 0 times anything gives you 0. Well, the key thing is, we kind of ignore that one. It's a little bit silly. This one, however, is really important. If that one is 0, that one will work. So if I set this 0, or if I set this one here equal to 0, Right? If I make that one zero, if I make this one here zero, this will work. Because making this zero times anything else makes it work. Making this one zero makes the rest of it irrelevant, so it works. So the whole idea is to use this zero factor theorem. That's why we bother factorizing. Otherwise, you might think, like, why would I care? So I'm trying to show you here's one way. There's a lot of ways of factorizing. A lot of teachers teach different ways. Uh, a lot of the tricks for factorizing, I've seen some with squares and things. There's lots of ways. Most of them involve, you know, looking at A, B, and C and trying to find out two numbers whose product is A times C. That's the first part of most of the tricks. So you want your product, you want to find two numbers who multiply to be A times C. You want them to add up to B, and you have to find those numbers. And then you write it out in a certain form. The problem is, what happens if A is not 1? If A is 1, that trick works. Most teachers and students factorizing tricks kind of fail if a isn't one my goal was to try to find something that works in all cases and this is one that i found actually i found an old textbook actually from like the 1930s it was awesome but they had this little algorithm to follow so the first two parts are sort of usual most people see those but the weird part is going to be steps three and four so i'm going to show you this we're going to divide by a we're going to reduce a fraction then we're going to read bottom to top and i'll explain what i mean let's maybe use as an, an example here so first, let's just try to find the zeros of the following. Well, we're going to first factorize. Okay, we're going to try to factorize this thing. We're going to try to write it in factored form. So can we? Well, let's see. Let's write out A. I always actually write them out. I write down A and B and C. So A is 1. That's the number in front of the x squared. B is a number in front of the x, which is minus 1. And C is minus 2. Using this right here, I'm going to write it down like this. I'm going to say product. I'll write it in different letters, colors, I mean. I'll say product, which is AC, is going to be 1 times negative 2. So I want two numbers whose product is minus 2, but the sum has always got to be B, which is minus 1. So what I'm going to try to do now is find, are there two numbers who multiply to minus 2 and who add to minus 1? Well, what I do is I just start writing all the different factors of minus 2. The only ways to get to 1 and minus 2 is, uh, sorry, the only two numbers I can multiply to get minus 2 is uh, 1 times minus 2 or minus 1 times 2. Now i got to look at, do any of, so those satisfy the product. Do any of them also satisfy the sum? In other words, if I add these two numbers, does any of them give me minus 1? Not this one that gives me plus 1. It's this one. Do you notice? 
So that's why what I'm going to do now, I'm going to circle them. This is how I always do it. I write it down just like this, ABC, product, sum, I find the two numbers. So far so good, most people do this this way. Now I'm going to divide them both by A, which sounds kind of weird, so I'm just going to write them out. I'm going to write 1 minus 2, going to divide them both by A, which is 1. I would reduce my fraction if I can, in this case I can't, and now comes the weirdest part, I read bottom to top. Watch carefully. This one right here then is going to be 1 times X plus 1. So watch, I'm going to say 1 times X, which is just X, plus 1. And the other one's going to be 1 times X minus 2. Ta-da! This works for all cases, whether A is 1 or not. I love this method. Now, why did we care about this? Because now this is actually factorized. So, now what? Well, now I use a zero factor theorem. The whole reason for factorizing was to use a zero factor theorem. I make this thing a zero. Well, if I make this thing a zero, do you notice x equals, let's see, minus 1. That'll make that work, so that's one of my solutions. My other solution is to make this one zero. Maybe I'll do it in a different color. I'll make this thing zero. If I set that thing equal to zero, does it make sense x is just going to be 2? Those are my two solutions. I'm done. Those are my zeros of the following. I've done them by hand without a calculator needed. Let me show you another example just to be sure. I like this one here. Uh, this is Yoda. Um, so solve for x. Let's just see here. <clears throat> this sounds like it's complicated. I'm not asked to find the zeros. But I can still do something with it. Watch carefully. <clears throat> what if I just rearrange this thing? Because right now it's not set up the right way. But what if I rearrange? So I'm just going to write the plus 5x. I'm going to move the 3 over to the other side. It becomes a minus 3. Ah, now I can use the zero factor theorem. Do you see? So even if it doesn't look like what it should, move it over. Hey, I can find zeros of quadratics. All right, I'm going to do my list now. So I'm going to go just like I did before right here. I'm going to write down my a's, b's, and c's. So a equals 2. Whoops. I'm doing blue just to be the same color coding. So a equals 2, b equals 5, and c equals minus 3. All right, so just like I did before. Now I've got to find my product and sum, so I'm going to do those as well. So let me see if I can do that here. So product, which is always, I just write it down just so it's easier to see, equals AC equals 2 times minus 3, which is minus 6. My sum, which is B, is going to be 5. So just like I've done before, now I've got to find out two numbers that actually work for that. So let's see, can I find two numbers? Well, what are all the numbers that multiply to minus 6? There's 1 times minus 6 works. Minus 1 times 6 works. There's also 2 times minus 3. And there's also minus 2 and positive 3. Those all work, mm, at least to give me a product. That's right. I just want to fix my writing here. But do they work for the sum? Well, which of these add up to 5? Hopefully it's clear to you. It's only this one that adds up to 5. See that one? So just like I've done before, I found my two numbers. Now what do I do? I divide by A and reduce my fraction if I can. So watch carefully. I'm going to go 1 and 6. I write out those two numbers. I'm going to divide by A, which was 2 in this case. But don't forget, though, 6 over 2 actually just gives you 3. Now I'm going to make it 3 over 1 just to make it a little bit simpler. Okay, So I'm going to make it like this. So now I read bottom to top. So how do I read bottom to top? It's going to be 2 times x minus 1. See, it's the bottom thing times x and add it. So 2x minus 1. Um, this one is going to be 1 times x plus 3. So x plus 3. Don't forget that whole thing equals 0. Now, why did we bother factorizing again? Ah, it's because we use a zero factor theorem. I set this thing equal to 0. Now, that might not be so clear, so let me just maybe write it down. Let's get 2x by itself. So I move my 1 over to the right, and then to get x by itself, then I, get, uh, I have to divide both sides by 2. So I have 1 half. That's one of my solutions. x equals 1 half. See, it works with fractions. No problem. Let's do it for the other one. This one right here, I have to set that one equal to 0. So I'll have x plus 3 equals 0. Hopefully you'll see that one's really easy. x is just minus 3. As long as I do it that way, I've got it covered. That's it. That's how we solve by factoring, or factorizing. So the key is, being able to do this at least is really important. Just write it out in some form. I don't really care too much about the P's and the Q's and the A's. I just think I want to factorize it so I can use this idea that any junk times anything else, as long as one of them is zero, it works. 
Now, why should you care? Well, we, zeros of quadratics are really important. We model lots of real-life situations. I mean, ballistic motion, which is like, I don't know if I shoot you out of a cannon or something. You know, lots of things in real life are quadratic. Like if you if you threw a ball, not straight up in the air and not straight across, but at some angle, the path of that ball in the air makes a really nice parabola. So we model it that way. Maybe some ideas for IAs, perhaps. Bridges very often use parabolas. So I've seen lots of bridges that'll use this idea. Maybe they'll go like this right here. They'll have some, you know, pieces here sticking it up, and this right here will be the road right here. But very often there's some sort of there's some sort of uh, quadratics going on. Um, there's reasons for those actually. So quadratics, there's lots of things that end up with that. Um, I even remember in high school, our teacher, we had a great, great physics teacher. So uh, shout out to Air Academy uh, High School in Colorado Springs. That's where I actually learned my English and uh, went to high school. We had an awesome, awesome teacher. Um, he actually had us try to you know, make little silly things like a solar heater. We wanted to try to heat up um, water using just the sun. And so it turns out parabolas do really nice things because parabolas have a uh, really nice feature that the light that comes from there here will always go into this one point. So the sun's light going like that will always shine into this one place called the focal point. And so as long as you make your solar heater, we actually made it out of cardboard first and we lined it with like a aluminum paper or aluminium if you're British. Um, we used aluminum paper and we put this little uh, beaker of water in there and we made the water boil. It was amazing. It was a really hot sunny day, but still. So parabolas, lots of places. But the key to solving them and to doing the zeros in this case for factorizing is finding it in factorized form. Use a zero factors theorem. Boom.